Ever wondered about the world's gender ratio, especially in Asia? From bustling cityscapes to tranquil temples, Asia is a continent of contrasts. Yet beneath the surface, there's another contrast that often goes unnoticed, gender imbalance. Around the globe, there's a roughly equal split between men and women, but in some places, the scales tip differently. In Asia, this gender imbalance is particularly pronounced. Several countries across this vibrant continent are grappling with skewed gender ratios, where the number of women greatly surpasses that of men. From the sprawling metropolises of China and India, to the serene landscapes of Pakistan and South Korea, this imbalance is a captivating part of the societal fabric. Down to the island nations of Japan and the Philippines, and even further to Vietnam and Thailand, the gender ratio tells a story of culture, history, and societal norms. So, are you ready to delve into the intriguing world of gender ratios in Asia? Buckle up! First on our list is China, a country known for its population density and unique gender dynamics. China, a nation of over a billion people, is grappling with a peculiar challenge, a significant gender imbalance. This imbalance is not a recent phenomenon, but rather a result of decades of socio-cultural and political factors. One of the primary reasons behind this disparity is the infamous one-child policy implemented in the late 20th century to control the population explosion. This policy, combined with a cultural preference for male children, led to a skewed gender ratio. Even though the policy has since been relaxed, the effects of this imbalance are still palpable today. China's gender dynamics are also influenced by rapid urbanization and economic growth. The migration of young men to cities in search of better opportunities has left many rural areas with a higher proportion of women. Indeed, the Dragon of Asia presents a unique case of gender imbalance. Next up is India, a land of diverse cultures and traditions that influence its gender ratio. India, with its myriad of cultures, paints a vivid picture of a nation where traditions play a pivotal role in determining the gender ratio. Traditionally, a preference for sons over daughters has been deeply ingrained in Indian society. This is due to several socio-economic reasons, such as the dowry system, where the bride's family is expected to give gifts to the groom's family, and the belief that sons will provide for their parents in old age. As a result, female infanticide and sex-selective abortions have been practiced, leading to a significant gender imbalance. However, it's important to note that these practices are not uniform across the country and vary from region to region. A mosaic of societal norms, India's rich history and diverse culture present a complex relationship with gender ratios. The subcontinent's rich history and culture present a complex relationship with gender ratios. Moving on to Pakistan, a country grappling with its own gender ratio challenges. Known for its rich history and vibrant culture, Pakistan's gender ratio presents a complex puzzle. The country's cultural norms and social issues play a significant role in shaping this dynamic. In many rural areas, a deep-rooted preference for sons over daughters prevails, leading to a skewed gender ratio. This preference is often driven by economic factors as sons are traditionally seen as breadwinners. But it's not all doom and gloom, Pakistan is witnessing a gradual shift. Urban areas are seeing a move towards balance with more girls being educated and women participating in the workforce. These changes are slowly but surely chipping away at the entrenched gender norms. Nonetheless, the road to gender balance in Pakistan is not without its hurdles. The struggle continues with the government and numerous non-profits driving initiatives to promote gender equality. Pakistan's journey towards gender balance is a story in progress. Let's turn our gaze to South Korea, where modernity and tradition influence its gender ratio. This vibrant nation pulsates with the energy of rapid urbanization and technological advancement, but beneath the gleaming skyscrapers and bustling city streets, a different story unfolds. In South Korea, cultural preferences have long favored male children, a sentiment rooted deep in the country's Confucian heritage. This preference is slowly changing, but its impact on the gender ratio is still noticeable. The country's rapid transition from an agricultural society to an industrial powerhouse has also played a part. As more people move to cities in search of work, the traditional societal structure has been disrupted, leading to a gender imbalance in some areas. Yet, South Korea is a nation in flux, striving to balance its rapid modernization with its rich cultural heritage. Its gender ratio is an intriguing reflection of this ongoing struggle. South Korea's gender ratio reflects its ongoing struggle between tradition and modernity. Next, we journey to Japan, 
a country facing a unique gender challenge due to its aging population. Japan is known for its longevity, with one of the highest life expectancies in the world. However, this longevity comes with an unexpected twist, a pronounced gender imbalance. The country is experiencing a rapidly aging population, and concurrently, a decline in birth rates. This situation has led to a surplus of elderly women. It's a demographic shift that has been decades in the making, influenced by factors such as improved health care, changing societal norms, and economic pressures deterring younger generations from starting families early. This imbalance poses various societal challenges. From pension schemes to health care, from housing to public services, Japan is having to rethink and redesign its social infrastructure. Yet despite these challenges, Japan is also a testament to resilience and innovation in the face of demographic change. Japan's gender ratio offers a glimpse into the challenges of an aging society. Let's explore Vietnam, a country whose gender ratio bears the scars of its past. Vietnam's gender imbalance is a complex issue, rooted deeply in its history. The Vietnam War played a significant role in skewing the gender ratio with a large number of men lost, leaving a surplus of women. The aftermath of the war also led to a spike in migration, with many Vietnamese men leaving the country in search of better opportunities, further exacerbating the gender imbalance. However, in recent years Vietnam has shown signs of progress. The country's government and various NGOs have been working tirelessly to address this issue, implementing policies to encourage gender equality and balance. Moreover, Vietnamese women have shown remarkable resilience in the face of these challenges, playing a crucial role in the country's social and economic development. Vietnam's gender ratio is a testament to its resilient spirit. We now move to the Philippines, where overseas work affects its gender ratio. This archipelago of over 7,000 islands is known for its vibrant culture, stunning landscapes, and a significant gender imbalance. A large portion of the Philippine population works abroad, with a majority being women. This trend is largely due to economic factors, as overseas jobs often offer higher wages and better opportunities. The Filipino diaspora spans the globe, from domestic workers in Hong Kong to nurses in the United States. This mass migration, while providing financial benefits, has also contributed to the skewed gender ratio back home. The absence of these women, who are often in their prime reproductive years, has a direct impact on the country's demographic structure. The Philippines' story is not just about numbers, but the human experiences behind them. The resilience and sacrifice of these overseas workers are a testament to their pursuit of a better life for their families. The Philippines' gender ratio story is intertwined with its role in the global labor market. Next on our list is Thailand, a country with a unique gender landscape. In Thailand, the gender ratio differs from many Asian countries, with a roughly equal number of men and women. However, the country's tourism industry and cultural norms significantly influence its gender dynamics. Thailand's thriving tourism industry, for instance, has led to an influx of single foreign males, altering the traditional gender balance. Cultural norms also play a key role. Thailand is known for its acceptance and recognition of the third gender, often referred to as Kathawis or ladyboys. This openness to gender fluidity creates a unique landscape, one where traditional male-female ratios may not fully capture the complexity of the society. In essence, Thailand's gender dynamics are shaped by a blend of economic factors, cultural norms, and an open-minded approach to gender identities. Thailand's gender ratio paints a unique picture of its society. Now that we've journeyed through these countries, what does this mean for Asia and the world? We've seen the giant with a tilt, China, struggling with its one-child policy aftermath. We've witnessed how tradition dictates ratio in India, and how Pakistan grapples with its own balance. South Korea, where modernity meets tradition, and Japan, with its aging population, both present unique scenarios. The war's legacy still impacts Vietnam, while the Philippines deals with the phenomenon of overseas workers. Lastly, we delved into Thailand's unique gender landscape, these gender imbalances paint a complex picture of Asia, where cultural norms, historical events and economic realities intertwine. They remind us that every nation has its own unique challenges and triumphs, shaped by its past and its people. And they have global implications, affecting migration patterns, international relations, and even the global economy. Remember, understanding gender ratios is just one way to understand our diverse and complex world. Keep exploring.